Today we're making geometric floating shelves. This is a DIY friendly process that doesn't require a lot of specialty tools or expensive hardware. I am going to show you how I make some custom stains from Minwax, which is the sponsor for this video. I had this leftover piece of ash and I just drew some geometric lines over the top. I really like this angular look, but the same concept would work with basic rectangles or even curves. I use my circular saw to cut along the lines to separate the board into three pieces. I then cut each piece into the shell that was shaped the way I wanted it to be. Ash is relatively inexpensive as far as domestic hardwoods go, but if you were doing this project on a budget, a 2x8 from your local home improvement center would work just fine. Or you could even stack up three layers of 3 quarter inch plywood. I drilled four inch deep holes that were half an inch in diameter. This way I can slice the shelves into two pieces and then use half inch dowels to connect the piece that I screwed to the wall to the rest of the shelf. But first let's do a little bit of power carving. I took my angle grinder and I put on one of these carving discs. These things are really handy and they go through wood super fast. It only took me about 15 minutes to shape each shelf into kind of the faceted geode that I was going for. The angle grinder certainly is fast, but it's also kind of rough. So then I switched to 60 grit paper on my orbital sander and flattened out the facets. Now that I have the shape right, I need to separate each shelf into two pieces, and I want the cut in between them to be as thin as possible. So I'm using my Japanese pole saw, guided by a rough jig that I made out of some scrap plywood. I was able to clamp everything down, and now I can just saw back and forth. Now, this is ash, it's pretty hard, and this took about 8 to 12 minutes to saw all the way through. But I think it's worth it because these pole saws have a really thin blade, so you're not removing that much material, so when the two pieces go back together, your facets will still be nice and aligned. It's way faster just to set up a jig so that you can use your circular saw to rip the piece into two, but the blade on the circular saw is almost an eighth of an inch wide, so that's removing a considerable amount of material, and when you line the pieces up, the facets aren't perfectly aligned. Now, that's not the end of the world. It just means you have a little bit more sanding to do after you insert some dowels and put the pieces together, but more on that later. I cut some four inch long sections of half inch diameter dowel. Now the holes are half an inch and the dowels are half an inch, so that means they're not going to slide into the holes too easily. So I did sand down the ends of the dowel that are going into the wider part of the shelf. I glued the dowels into the narrower piece that's going up against the wall and pounded them into place with my hammer fist. I sanded down the pegs that are going into the wider part of the shelves quite a bit and I wasn't too worried about a tight fit because I didn't drill the holes perfectly straight so there's going to be some pressure between the two pegs. Here you can see the difference between the thin kerf cut of the pole saw versus the circular saw. So I had to go back and do another 8 minutes of sanding on the shelves that I cut with the circular saw. These shelves are a prototype for a custom client that's interested in a bunch of green shelving. So I wanted to test out some different shades of a green wood stain by mixing different combinations of Minwax semi-transparent and solid wood finish. These stains come in so many different colors, and you get options in terms of the opacity of the stain. The semi-transparent goes on thin and allows a lot of the wood grain to show through, whereas the solid color stains allow you to dramatically transform the wood with a solid application of color. I always like to start by taking some scraps of the same species of wood and applying the stain to those scraps so they can see how the color looks on that type of wood. I want these three shelves to be all a little bit different, but not too different. So I mix different combinations of chartreuse in semi-transparent with gentle olive in the solid color, and then I use simply white in semi-transparent to lighten the third shelf just a little bit more. Now before I apply the stain to the shelves, I want to clean and condition the wood with Minwax Pre-Stain Wood Conditioner. You just brush it on real thick with a high quality brush, let it sit for a few minutes, and then wipe off the excess before it dries with a clean rag. Wood can have all sorts of oils or sometimes sap and dirt on it, and using a pre-stain ensures that you'll get a more consistent application of a colored wood stain over the top. 
The moisture in the pre-stain tends to raise the wood grain a little bit after the wood dries. So I just went over it with 220 grit sandpaper and quickly smoothed down the fibers that had arisen. I wiped off the wood dust with a clean rag and now I'm ready to apply my custom mixed stains. I apply a fairly heavy coat with a rag, make sure I got everything nice and covered, and then use a clean rag to wipe off the excess within two minutes of the first application. The wiping off process is where I can control how much of the wood grain shows through. For these shelves, I just want a nice consistent application of color with a decent amount of grain showing through. I'm really happy with how the color came out and now I'm gonna add a protective coat of Minwax Polyacrylic with a matte finish. This will just protect the wood and that nice colored stain I just added. To mount the shelves, I'm going to drill some half inch diameter holes into the bracket side that's going against the wall. These holes are going to allow me to countersink the screw heads. And so I also drilled pilot holes that will allow the screws to go through in the center of those wider holes. These shelves are pretty short and I'm not putting anything too heavy on them. So I just drilled holes in the drywall and put in some drywall anchors. These anchors are rated for 46 pounds, which should be plenty strong. You can align the shelves using a level so that they're all at the same height. But I think the visual strength of this particular design is really revealed when they're staggered. The underside of these shelves looks as nice as the edges and the top, so an uneven disbursement of them I think looks really good. The client liked the lightened version of the Gentle Olive, but wants a more organic shape. These facets were just a little too sharp for their taste. Thanks for watching and thanks to Minwax for sponsoring this video and check out the links in the description box below. Bye!